Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about something that, you know, I watched this old video and we used to live stream together on Google Hangouts. This was 2015, three years ago, and we had so much fun. I'll show you some screenshots of both HQ and Headquarters and Zemit and Max Plays and these are uh, quad nine still kind of makes videos. I'm still sub to him uh, Josh Oros and the other guy I don't know who he is and if he still makes YouTube videos, but I know Lubufu rogue deck builder a lot of these old-school magic people were on live stream and that was what we would do sometimes is every Friday or Saturday night We would live stream together and this video is four hours which is not atypical for one of our videos, we would get, and I wasn't a very big channel at the time, and I went on live stream with Gurge on Nerds, um, just like smaller channels. Oh, Savo, MTG Savo of G, like, and that's gone. Um, I don't, is it my fault? Is it partially my fault? I think so. I think the community has changed a lot, and as I watch this video, everyone's having a good time, everyone's laughing, it was not as exclusive as currently you may believe the YouTube community is right now. People generally liked each other. Uh, they laughed at Joe. It was just a good time. And yes, this is Wed. Uh, you see everyone. So I'm on. Uh, you have Lion, Max plays MTG. He's also a judge. And Josh Oros, Zemet, who still makes videos. I've seen some of his recent stuff. I think he is on Gathering Magic, MTG Headquarters, uh, this other guy I don't know, but normally we had MTG with Savo G or Girls Are Nerds or so someone that you would know, and Wedge. So how did we get to where we are today? I mean, it's, it's crazy to think about uh, where we as a community are today and even these individuals where they've all kind of gone to. Uh, and now when it's sad, uh, I, I don't want to sugarcoat it and say that, you know, oh, it's this person's fault. It's, I'm, it's everybody's fault. Back when we were doing these live streams, there was no money. Uh, there was no Patreon. There was the YouTube ad revenue was as bad as it is today. And there was no sponsorships. It was just a bunch of people who enjoyed magic. And there was a bunch of people, actually, there was no other reason to produce content other than you like to produce content. There was no magic fame. There was, YouTube was such a small niche of the magic community. I remember the community cup for a very long time, not a single YouTuber could get on the community cup until Wedge finally got past that and that that time I was super proud of him because everyone else in Community Cup was a podcaster or, and this is Emmett, uh, he's in college I believe at the time. We all took four hours every other week or every time, these were just randomly scheduled. We send out the link and then anyone can join regardless of your channel size. Now we have a lot of I want to bring that back. I'm just not sure if I'm the right person to do it. I feel like a younger, not a younger in terms of age, but a younger in terms of how old their channels are should do this. And they should have a fun time and they should enjoy it. I really did enjoy these live streams. Uh, they were probably one of the best experiences I had with YouTube. Yeah, I've only met MTG headquarters one time. Uh, these other people I didn't meet, but I felt like they were truly my friends. We grew apart, and I think it comes down to money. There's only a set amount of money. So what? who's missing from this uh, is very is Tolarian. And Tolarian never went on any live streams of us uh, that I was part of, and I joined multiple live streams. And something kind of changed. So I don't want to pin this on him because I think this change would have just naturally happened. He showed that you can quit your job 
you can make six figures, you can get five, ten thousand dollars in donations from in, in one individual if you do magic content properly um, as a business model. Then suddenly people knew there was money. Then when there was money. And I am one of the benefactors of that, so I cannot blame Tolarian because I have benefact I've benefited greatly from the commercialization of magic. Um, I don't have any. I don't. I have one sponsor, Jeremy, not this Jeremy, but you know a Jeremy sponsor from Australia, and that's it. But I have benefited from it. But you can tell, like, we're laughing, we're having. It's not faked. You can't fake something for four hours on live stream. Now no one does live streams anymore because I think it is. I watched this video. I watched all four hours in the video while I was working and having it back. We just had a blast. We had so much fun um, that I can't. I really wish this for other new YouTubers that they can find a group of content creators that they enjoy making videos on. None, no one was making money at this point. There was no sponsorship. There, the YouTube. There was no money. And as soon as money came in, as soon as a model existed, where wait a second, you can make six figures. You had issues. Uh, you had butting of heads. I remember we stopped live streaming as soon as people started selling playmats. Tolarian had his playmat. Wedge has his. Um, HQ had his playmat. And it became kind of a grab for money, and I didn't. My channel, this channel, and the, the new law student channel, which had 2,000 subscribers way back when, which never got a cent from YouTube ad revenue because I didn't care. We have YouTube ad revenue now, so you can't just, I will say I changed too. Because why not? Like, I'm going to tell you, I get paid between $500 and $800 a month on YouTube, depending on the month. That's like free money because I would be producing these videos anyway. So, yeah. Um, it's sad. I, I, that's the best way I can describe it. You can see we're having... The, this is MTG headquarters telling a joke to Wedge and the Manosaurus. And Wedge thinking it was hilarious. And Wedge tells a joke to the MTG headquarters back. And we all think it's funny. So we're having... I did. I was going to post a video here, but like, it's just I don't want to do that. I I just want to. If you are a small YouTube content creator and you can find a group of friends, actual friends, and you don't need to meet them in real person. I know I'm very critical about meeting people in real life. And you can laugh, and everyone's going to spend four hours together and live streaming. Then that's something kind of special. Uh, that's something special. And it's also very special for your viewers. I'm going to criticize my own work right now. I don't think it's the best. I mean, you can see that's HQ and Wedge. This is not like screenshots. These are screenshots from a few seconds apart. A few seconds apart. So we're obviously laughing at the same joke. How did we get to, how did we get to this point? Uh, I don't know. And I... You know, I would never wish that upon any other YouTube content creators. Being part of the YouTube community, um, it has grown a lot. Uh, it has gotten a lot bigger. We were so disrespected when we first started. Uh, it was all about podcast. It was podcast this, podcast that, and we had no power. We don't. We don't. We didn't. No one knew who we were. Even the bigger channels. Only people, only new podcasters. When you talk about the YouTube, uh, the uh, Magic Gathering Community Cup, it was just podcasters, some pros, and then maybe occasional blog writer. Trying to get an interview with any of these people like was insane. They would be like, wait, so you're on YouTube? Get the blank out. And then we became, you know, I think after Tolarian kind of commercialized it, it became about money. And it's been about money, and I'm not immune to that. I get what videos do well, and I get what, what videos don't do well. Uh, the MTG Finance videos are not doing well anymore. It's very niche. And 
how many times can I tell you to buy reserve list cards, right? I, there's no nothing I can tell you in standard or modern that makes sense. I can make some stuff up, but eventually, like, you'd be like, wait a second. I, I know most speculations in modern and standard are trash. They just are. You have too many reprints. You have too many challenger decks. You have explorers of Ixlan. You have commander. I mean, there's just way too much product out there being reprinted at all given times that even if you got the card right, it's a bad spec because it's been reprinted. So I don't know. I I might I might bring back these live streams, and it would be good for smaller content creators to get on them because that way, like. If you're on my live stream, then people who are not subscribed to you are going to watch your videos uh, or they might know about you at least. And so you here you had uh, Weds, HQ, which were bigger channels at the time. Joss and Zemit and Max Plays were smaller channels at the time and I was kind of a medium sized channel. So it didn't matter. I don't even know who the guy, the guy in, uh, next to Weds is. I have no idea. I think he's just a random subscriber. Uh, I, I think at max you can get like we could get seven people on or eight people. Was at, this was in 2015. Otherwise, it would crash. But we had so much fun doing it, and I this is one of the things I miss most. And I know Zemet does a MTG Finance live stream, but the thing was a little different, and that his uh, the people he's live streaming with are the same every time. For me. Part of what's exciting is you never know who's going to pop up. You know, you never know who Rogue Deck Builder, Girls and Nerds. Um, you never know who's going to be here. Salvo with G. Like these used to be bigger names back in the day. It was just fun. It was a good time. And I don't think anyone. I think we actually made real friendships here. And it's sad to see it disintegrate. It didn't disintegrate automatically, it just disintegrate over time. As more and more, more money flew into the thing, so like for me, I knew Pico Trade was a scam. So people who were promoting it, I know that they know better, because like if we're giving everyone free points, and you yourself has received three million dollar, three million Pico points, then how does that bounce out? The same with the monthly Magic Box. Uh, people will criticize me for not receiving one. I turned it down. So everyone who didn't turn it down, I had a lower opinion of. Like, why are you guys doing this? They're just selling you stuff at Dave and Adams. Like, stuff that no one wants. And you're saying, like, this stuff is like 20 bucks when I can buy for two and no one even wants to buy for two? So through time, we became... It's the saddest story in Magic. It, it really is. Anyway. Bye, guys. <laughs>